Hello folks, today I'm going to be taking a look at the Le Grognards from Wargames Atlantic. So, if you've not come across them before, these are 24 multi-part hard plastic 28mm figures for the Death Fields. Um, at the moment, Wargames Atlantic don't have a game, however, uh, the Raum Jäger and Le Grognards are being brought together towards the end of having a game. Um, on the back you can see the death fields themselves, the idea that people are being abducted and then forced to play in these um, games, we'll call them, like the Hunger Games. So Le Grognard, the team began with the Corps of Napoleon's young and old guard from Waterloo and later were reinforced with troops from the Western Front of the Great War and decades later from the jungles of Vietnam. Over the centuries, their shared French language and culture and trades by owners have brought them together as a combined team on the Deathfield circuit. Even after centuries, the elite members of Le Grognard go to battle with the cry, Vive la France. So, it comes equipped with a variety of weapons and headgear. You can build 24 heroic scale 28mm figures with a variety of options, including swords, pistols, plasma guns, communication packs, yada, 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 yada. 192 heads in this box for 24 men. I'm sure that these are all shay, you're really spoiling us. So, let's have a look. There are two sprues and they are multiplied by many. So, we have this sprue of which we have, I think, eight of each, I want to say. Yeah, eight of each. So our first sprue is the standard um, infantry sprue, shall we say. And this is where the whole thing started. So you have three bodies. You have uh, three arms with a form of rifle with a bayonet, so some form of large rifle if you're playing 40k. You have special weapons, so grenade launcher, flamer, some sort of uh weapon, and then you also have this very large uh weapon. You have a set of backpacks, pistol and a um, chain sword. You have three um, helmets, so the Adrian World War I pattern, or Adrienne probably, uh, with gas mask. And this was going to be the original sprue, and then people started talking about variations, and they started sculpting variations, and added a few heads. Uh, we have a single grenade, and over here we have a pair of grenades. These three arms are for your special weapons. These arms with no hands are for your rifle with bayonet. We have a pistol holster, an uh, additional satchel, a scabbarded sword, and a couple of hands here with grenades. You can see detail around the cuffs of the, um, well, the sleeves we have got this sort of um, scalloping. So this is the first of the sprues. Some nice detailing on the back, not a huge amount. They are after all wearing great coats. So you've got a canteen. The bulge fits the back of the uh, packs they're wearing. The second sprue, of which there are also eight, giving you your 192 heads. It means you can put a full 24 out, and they can either have the World War I uh, Adrian pattern, you can have your Young Guard or New Guard Shako, the Old Guard Bearskin Shako, or the Kepi. And in each case, you also have a unmasked or gas-masked variant. So 
for all of them. All options are there. There are even the um, sun shades that hang off the back of the kepi, so you get three per sprue. So you can do all 24 in any way you want. If you want to have all 24 bear skinned, if you want to have all 24 kepied or adrian, they're all there. Um, I have put some together and there are a few issues that I'll speak about. Um, but overall, I was quite impressed by this. So first things first. I put a set together. There are no bases with the set, by the way. So whatever set you are going to build, you will need to supply your own bases. I very cleverly put half of mine on green and half on grey just so I can t keep them uh, separated. The first thing I will say is build-wise they went together fairly easily. Um, there's not a huge amount of build in them because the torso and body is one, head is separate, arms are separate and then additional packs and that sort of thing. However, these arms are specific to the rifle slash bayonet. So where we have this one at the ready and this one firing, um, and we actually have a third sort of advancing. The left arm is specific. However, there is no way of telling which left arm is which, because as you can see, these two arms that are extended are beside this one and the other rifle bayonet is over here. So you know that this pair go together. This and this is either or you need to dry fit before you put them on. As far as I can tell, special weapons, it doesn't matter which, although I may just have been particularly lucky when I came to build them and just happened to pick the right one in each um, option. But that aside, that's, that's a minor quibble. Um, the first time you build them, you should probably dry fit before you glue, or glue one arm and then dry fit your adjoining arm on. They fit in quite nicely. There's a slight uh, lip on the shoulder pad that neatly tucks on top of the, uh, the rise of the body, so they fit together more or less snugly in one particular way. Detailing the actual bodies themselves, the seam line runs along the middle of the body, so there'll be a bit of cleanup, but it's easy to get to, so that's nice. Um, the legs themselves blend into the back of the great coat they're wearing, uh, as you might be able to see there. So you want to paint the back black. If you're using something like contrast paints or inks, uh, you'll need to go in afterwards and tidy those up. Um, the detail isn't gouged in, which to be fair, I'm quite happy with. I'm not a fan of that extreme detailing because if you were to blow these miniatures up to life size, this would be realistic, whereas something with very carved detail uh, just looks looks out of place. And even on 28mm, it looks out of place. So as you can see, they've got their uh, great coats pegged back or pinned back out of their way. So nice bit of detail there. The bayonets themselves are uh, diamond shape and fairly robust. Now, one of them, there we are. This one, actually, you can see the slight strain at the tip of the bayonet uh, from where it just got jostled about. However, it hadn't broken. Um, I've not done any extreme cleanup on these. You can see where I've just literally clipped them off the sprue. The fact that it had suffered a bit of damage on the sprue just by being jostled in the box, it's unfortunate, but it's not unexpected. I'd rather have a robust bayonet like this that can take that hit um, because once that's painted, you won't be able to see that anymore. I've actually already straightened that out, so it's, it's uh, relatively true. But yeah, I've, I've seen sword bayonets um, cast accurately and they don't stand up to wargaming. These are wargaming figures, so you want them to go together quickly, you want them to look like they look, and you don't want them to take uh, a huge amount of damage if they get jostled about when you're playing. Detail-wise, if I pull out the new and old guard here, 
there is enough detail on the miniatures that I'm happy without being overly fussy. There are 24 of these in the box after all. Um, if I'm putting together, if you're playing 40k, if you're putting together 100 of these or so, you don't want to be spending forever building them and then doubling the time or if not more in trying to get all the detail painted. So we have the likes of the Imperial Eagles on there. You've got the frogging, the plume, the bear skins have enough texture on them to pick up either a dry brush or a, a, an ink wash. Um, it, it does the job quite nicely. They go together fairly well. If I have a look then at our green base chaps. What I will say is there are a few things I would wish we'd had. So there are two grenades. So if you have this grenade throwing, you really have to give it the pointing finger. Um, if you're not going to use that, then you're going to have to go in and do a bit of converting work because nothing else really looks like it's um, paired particularly well. So you couldn't really have any of the other hands there. Um, let me just actually bring the sprue back in temporarily. As far as left hands go, you have these empties for the special weapons. You have this for the heavy weapon that cuts off at the hand so it can't be used. You've got a second grenade. So he could be throwing a grenade with another grenade in his hand, but it doesn't sit particularly well. Possibly in place of some of these um, additional heads, maybe another couple of hands for the left arms or a couple of right arms holding just the rifle without having the hand attached would be nice. Um, but it's a minor thing. So, like I say, you've got this chap lobbing a grenade. And he's fairly dynamic. He's leaning back into it. It's a good pose. I like it. We have a captain here with Kepi. Got the guard on the back and has that other arm with grenade. He could be leaning back a bit more into that. It looks a little bit disjointed. Um, I know on the box they have it extended. Where are we? We're here. So you can see here he's almost getting ready to throw it. Uh, it's just a little, a little static, a little forced, I feel, for that. It's not bad, you know, it's, it's a minor quibble in the grand scheme of things. And here we have Flamer. Like I say, both this and the grenade launcher. If those aren't the right arms, if the arms can just be swapped between them, um, that would make a lot of sense to me. If they are specific, then I just happen to have picked the right two arms out of six pairs or three pairs of six. Uh, so I, I imagine these can just be freely interchanged because there's no connection point. But that is uh, War Games Atlantic's Grognards. So we've had the Raumjäger. Uh, they've teased what I think is going to be some form of British colonial in space. So that's quite nice. I know they've talked about going back and doing some sort of heavy support or heavy weapons for them, um, possibly based on uh, a French artillery piece. Um, so we'll see, see where they go in future. I have to say I'm, I'm very impressed with the amount of variations you can have. So because they are great coat, great coat troopers, um, if I put my teeth back in, they can easily be painted up as if they were First World War or Napoleonic era uh, equally well. The, um, the head variants are a delight. I've just, I would just like a few more arm variants um, and possibly a numbering on the sprue so you know easily which arm goes to which as far as the pairing goes. But uh, for the price you cannot beat War Games Atlantic's um, grognards. They are by far and away one of the best 
companies out there churning out affordable trips for sci-fi and fantasy and they're really getting in there and picking out the unusual and obscure that people may not know they want until they see them. I know this one has, has blown up online and it'll be interesting to see where they go next, especially if they do do British colonial um, in space, because an awful lot of people have been waiting for the pith helmeted British in plastic since uh, another company had um, did them in metal about 20 odd years ago. So the Grognards from Wargames Atlantic's Deathfields, uh, let me know what you think below if they need some support or artillery. Probably get onto Wargames Atlantic and let them know as well. They're currently asking their fans online, let's put it like that. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye bye. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.